In today's video, we're going to be talking about the spot price of silver and gold. We're going to be talking a little bit about the stock market, and we're going to be talking a lot about supply chain constraints. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about the spot price of silver climbing back up above the $22 an ounce mark, premium excluded. But we also have to talk about supply chain issues potentially getting worse in early 2022. We're going to get into it really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Got the limited edition Christmas line, helping raise a little bit of funds and awareness for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, only available until Christmas. And of course, make sure to go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. For every three friends you refer, you get a spin on the spin wheel where you're guaranteed a free share of Apple with the chance of getting two, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 free shares of Apple. And until Thursday, for every friend that you refer, they're going to give you six free random bonus stocks. We will link in the description. So today is Tuesday, December 21st, 2021. The spot price of silver, as I'm filming the video, is $22.54. It's up 28 cents or up 1.26%. Pretty green day for silver. Gold is currently $17.93.60, up $2.30 or up 0.13%. Very mild green day for gold. And of course, the gold to silver ratio is in the 79 to 80 to 1 range. But again, that's as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today, we have quite a bit to talk about. And first things first, we are going to be talking quite a bit about silver and gold. But before we can even get into the money, I think we need to also talk about the currency. Over the weekend, we learned that 46 has a big, important, urgent announcement that was somehow able to wait until today. At the time I'm recording the video, the announcement has not yet been made, but the markets freaked out yesterday. I went into full detail in yesterday's video, and I highly recommend you go and watch that video before the announcement is made, which is likely to be tonight. It's very important. Please go watch that video. But in addition to that, I think it's also important that we speak about some of the possible supply chain issues we may be seeing in early 2022 on top of the supply chain issues we're currently seeing today. There's this Canadian policy that I learned about that's basically a proposal that would require all U.S. truckers to have gotten their shot before crossing over into Canada by January 15th. Now, realistically, many truckers have probably already gotten the shot if that's what they chose to do because it is their choice after all. But as for the ones that have not gotten the shot, maybe they'll get it, maybe they won't. Again, it's 100% their choice, but let's be fair. I think after nearly a full year of access to shots, those who still haven't gotten it, probably safe to say that they've chosen not to get it at all. Again, that's their choice. But let's not get hung up on the shots here because that's not what the video is about. The reason I bring this up is because we have seen a lot of people quit their jobs and a lot of people get fired from their jobs over this issue and it's caused a lot of problems in a lot of different fields. But truckers have been driving this whole time. They are considered essential workers, which they absolutely are, although I personally argue that every worker is an essential worker to the overall health and well-being of the economy. But truckers are the reason we have nearly everything we own, most notably food. Without food being transported, every single Walmart, Costco, and grocery store would be an empty building. Now here's where things 
can get a little bit scary. And I feel bad because I always cite my sources in my videos, but I'm unable to find where I heard this from because yesterday when I was at work, I was just listening to audio in the background and they were explaining how even a measly 10% shortage of truckers would have a disastrous impact on the supply chain. 10% might not sound like much at all, but trust me, that 10% covers a lot of ground. My grandfather, for example, he was a truck driver and a warehouse worker. He stayed local, but do you have any idea how much truckers work? They literally live on the road. They have beds inside their trucks. They drive all over the country. They drive into other countries. Some of them are only home two or three days a month. Imagine cutting off 10% of them. Just 10%. That would be a detriment. And speaking of supply chain issues, I know it's not American news, but I found this pretty interesting. McDonald's in Japan is now only selling small fries due to supply chain bottlenecks. Japan gets a majority of their potatoes from North America, and with the supply chain issues we have going on over here, it's affecting them over there. Not to mention, the flooded Vancouver port caused even more of a squeeze. I know Japanese McDonald's may not matter to you. I bring them up only to paint a picture. If current supply chain constraints are leading to a potato shortage in Japan, imagine what type of an impact it would have on us, not to mention the rest of the world, if we cut off truckers by any percent. Not good. And somewhat moving away from supply chain issues, although not entirely, it leads me to a precious metals related supply chain question. It just makes me wonder, how big of an impact something like this could have on the transportation of silver and gold? Sure, a lot is mined right here, but a lot is mined in places like Canada and Mexico, for example. And when I say this, I'm not just talking about, oh no, we're not going to be able to stack maple leaves and libertads. I'm talking about the transportation of silver and gold for how they're really used. We all know by now, or at least we should, that precious metals are incredible conductors of both heat and electricity. They're used in jewelry, they're used in batteries, they're used in medicine, they're used in cars, they're used in electronics like microchips, for example, not to mention... Friendly reminder, we already have a chip shortage. If precious metal transportation begins slowing down, spot price might start getting a little bit wacky. Something to think about. But now, moving away from supply chain issues, let's now get fully into the silver and the gold. The precious metals are actually having a really good day today. Silver's up over one and a quarter percent. Gold is up as well. And surprisingly, the entire stock market is up too. At the time I'm filming the video, 46 has yet to make the big important announcement that we all had to wait multiple days for. We still don't know exactly what that's all about. So I'm surprised the markets aren't still panicking over all of the uncertainty Kind of like what we saw yesterday where everything was down almost 2%. For example, today, the S&P 500 is up 0.48%. The Dow Jones is up 0.82%. The NASDAQ is up 0.38%. Pretty strong day for the stock market. And really quick, speaking of the stock market, make sure to go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Tell three friends about it to win one to ten free shares of Apple. And for every friend that you tell about Weeble until Thursday, time's running out, they will give you six free random bonus stocks for each friend you refer. That's all you have to do. Just tell a friend about it. Weeble link in the description. But now, back to silver and gold. Spot price is up today, as we can see, especially for silver. In fact, with all of the craziness going on right now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this continues to be the trend for essentially the rest of the year, at least. 
Ideally, I'd rather that not be the case because I love the red days. But let's be honest. Am I really going to be making it to the coin shop this week? Probably not, unfortunately. Christmas is this weekend as well, and next week is the last week of the entire year. Maybe I can get there at some point then, but the year is pretty much done. I got some silver this month already. Not sure if I'm willing to break my back to get a little bit more during the holiday chaos, especially with silver being in the green right now, but we'll see. And then as for gold, I decided last month that I won't be getting any more gold until January. I got three new pieces of gold in November, so I pretty much clocked out on gold until January. Everyone in the Precious Metals VIP club was invited to the live unboxing of that gold, by the way, and I even made a whole separate video about it, which is in the VIP club. Link in the description if you want to become a VIP club member. But I'm clocked out right now, at least when it comes to gold. It's been a very expensive last couple of months for me, and December is the busiest month of the year. So to tell you the truth, I don't even want to think about adding anything else to the list of things I need to do. Even if it's as minuscule as a quick drive to the local coin shop, I want nothing else added to the list. Plus, I got a little bit of silver already. I'm likely to hold off until January, which I think is perfectly fine. It's only, what, a week and a half away? But my next couple pickups are likely going to be the same as what I've been saying. Unless, of course, some opportunity to get something else pops up. If I'm able to get a really good deal or if I'm able to find a discount on something that I wasn't exactly planning on getting. If something that just isn't really on my radar at the moment presents itself to me, then sure, I'm not closed-minded, and I've never been one to say no to an opportunity. But what's on my radar right now, when it comes to silver, 90% and 90% only. That's really all I care about at the moment. I don't care about other types of coins, rounds, or bars at this point in time. And by the way, everything you see on screen right here, let me just quickly run through it because I want to talk about different types of tubes and ways you can store your silver and gold. Up there at the top, we have a bunch of generic silver rounds. A couple of these have been my double upload December bonus videos just a couple of days ago. I reviewed a couple of these. I have some more reviews coming out over the next couple of days. But a bunch of generic silver rounds. This one, for example, Honest Value Never Fails. These generic silver rounds should probably be kept in generic tubes. Simple little tubes, inexpensive, cheap tubes, like these for example. You can get a 10-pack for probably about $10, maybe even a little bit less. I'll leave the link in the description. I always leave resources in the description. These are just cheap little tubes. They're not really anything of high quality. In fact, if you drop one full of silver, it'll likely crack, so just make sure not to drop it. And you're also going to probably want to tape it shut because when you have 20 ounces of silver in here, not to say that it's very heavy, but if you pick it up by the cap, boom, it'll pop right off and then your rounds will go spilling everywhere. So if you're going to get these and fill them up with generic silver rounds, make sure to tape them shut. As for the gold coins you see on screen, and it also goes for silver coins as well, really anything that goes inside of an airtight capsule like these right here, they go into airtight tubes. Now you can get a couple of different sizes. You can get a lot of different sizes. If you need any airtight tubes and capsules, I will also leave these in the description. I personally would not use airtights for anything that isn't of real significance. If it's just generic rounds or simple little American Eagles or Maple Leafs or anything like that, I wouldn't worry too much about capsulating them. I have in the past, it was just a rookie mistake because I was under the impression that you should probably capsulate everything to keep it protected. You can if you want to, but airtight tubes and capsules are a little bit more expensive, not to mention it takes up a little bit more room because for every coin you put in an airtight capsule, it pretty much doubles the size. So an airtight tube is roughly twice as tall as a mint tube, and they both hold 20 ounces of silver. Just something to take into consideration. 
airtight air tights are absolutely fantastic for collectible pieces or 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 higher premium coins or, or even something that's not a high premium coin that just has I guess more sentimental value to you for whatever reason. It just helps keep them a little bit more protected. So if you need any air tights, link in the description. And then finally, when it comes to coins that don't need to be put in air tights, just put them in mint tubes. They're only a couple of bucks. You can fill them up on your own, or you can just order 20 silver eagles or 25 maple leaves. The different tubes hold different amounts. But if you order the maximum amount, usually they'll come with a mint tube. But just in case they don't, or just in case you order less than 20 at a time, you can go and get yourself a mint tube. Once again, the link will be in the description. Now moving back into some of my plans for silver and gold. Of course, when it comes to 90%, or should I say when it comes to silver, I'm pretty much only going after 90%. But when you break it down even further, when it comes to the 90%, I'm really just primarily going after Washington Quarters. That's really what's on my radar right now. They're the cheapest possible silver you can get at my local coin shop at least. And at the moment, that's just what I plan on sticking to. When it comes to gold on the other hand, I have a couple of pieces that I wanna get. At the end of the day, my number one priority when it comes to gold is just to simply get more gold. So I'm not going to go after anything overly specific, even though my next couple of pickups are probably specifically going to be a 2021 or a 2022 quarter ounce gold Britannia. I love those things. I've always loved the Britannia. And with the new security feature that was implemented in 2021, complete game changer it's now one of my favorite gold coins of all time because of that security feature it just really it really raised the bar for me i, I love that coin and i definitely want to get one i have one right here in the 10th ounce denomination i don't have a quarter ounce one but that's probably going to be one of my next gold coins in addition to that to be honest probably before that I want to get myself a quarter ounce gold maple leaf. Again, that's a coin that I do not have. I have a tenth ounce though. I actually have a couple. I have a tenth ounce gold maple leaf right here. I don't have any quarter ounce maple leaves. I have a quarter ounce philharmonic right here. And if you ask me, I think quarter ounce gold coins are almost like the happy medium in a way. Of course, you can save quite a bit on the premium by going after larger denominations. Same goes for silver by the way a one ounce silver bar usually ends up being a little bit more if you get 10 of them than it would be if you were to just get a 10 ounce silver bar it's like it's like going to the wholesale club in a way the larger the denomination the cheaper it usually gets but i love the quarter ounce denomination i, I just i love this size piece of gold this right here is almost like holding on to a 10 ounce silver bar because i always said that these 10 ounce silver bars, they feel really good in the hand. They feel really good to hold on to. It just really makes you feel like you're holding on to something of real value. Of course, any amount of silver makes you feel that way, but when you have a 10 ounce bar in your hand, like you actually feel the weight. Like you can just tell, I don't know. It just, just, it just makes you realize that you're holding on to something of substance, something substantial. It just makes you feel good. That's kind of how I feel about the quarter ounce gold coins and even though there's not a whole great deal of weight behind these things i don't know what it is it's just it's just a really nice size piece of gold and it's the largest size i have i don't have any half ounce i don't have any one ounce maybe one day they're kind of pricey so i do typically prefer to stick with fractional gold i'm not close-minded to getting some half ounce gold coins but i want to load up on some quarter ounce gold coins first and i think probably the next one i'm going to get more than likely going to be a quarter ounce gold maple leaf. Another one of my favorite gold coins. One of my favorite gold coins of all time. Of course, number one would be the gold buffalo, which I don't have any in any denomination. I really wish the U.S. Mint would bring back fractional gold buffaloes. Those were only produced for one year and one year only. 2008. Don't ask me why. I have no idea, 
I wish that they would bring them back though, because if you want to get your hands on a fractional gold buffalo, your only choice is to go with the 2008, and being that they were only minted one year, they have crazy high premiums. For example, if you wanted to get a 10th ounce gold buffalo, it would run you almost the same amount of currency as it would to get a quarter ounce gold anything else. And then if you raise the bar and go for a quarter ounce gold buffalo, it would cost you almost as much as getting a half ounce gold anything else. And God forbid you want to get a half ounce gold buffalo, they're costing almost as much as a one ounce gold coin, in which case you might as well just go with a one ounce gold buffalo at that point. So unfortunately, my favorite gold coin is out of the question right now. And I could very easily go for a one troy ounce gold buffalo, very low premiums on those. In fact, those are a good example of one of the cheaper one ounce gold coins that you can get. Although I'm personally not able to or willing to pack $2,000 into one piece of metal. If I had $2,000 in my pocket right here, right now, sure, I might be able to do that, but I wouldn't be willing to do that. I would rather put $500 roughly into four different quarter ounce gold coins or, or, or 10 different tenth ounce gold coins or even two different half ounce gold coins. I just personally strongly prefer fractional gold. If the premiums were the same, I would still go for fractional. And with the premiums being a little bit higher on fractional, I still prefer fractional because I consider them to be probably a whole lot more practical or easier to liquidate. Not to say that a one ounce gold coin is hard to get rid of if you need to, but I might not need to get rid of that whole one ounce of gold. I might only need two, three hundred dollars, in which case, why would I get rid of a whole two thousand piece of gold, two thousand dollar piece of gold? That's just the way I see it. It's just easier to liquidate. And if need be, I can part ways with a smaller amount of gold if I don't need such a large amount of cash. But knock on wood, God forbid, I'm ever in a situation where I need to part ways with my silver and gold anyway. That's not why I'm stacking them. I'm not stacking them so that I can get rid of them when I need cash. But in an emergency situation, it's nice to know that I'm able to. It's nice to know that I've taken care of my silver and gold for just about four years now. And if anything were to ever go wrong, it's, you know, I sleep pretty well at night knowing my silver and gold are there for me if I need them. But like I said before, I think I'm clocking out for the rest of the year, which is only like 10 more days. So it's not really all that serious. I'm likely going to be holding off until January, but I'm curious to know if you can head on down to the comments and preferably leave me two different comments. Number one, what are your thoughts on the current supply chain issue? And do you think it's likely going to get worse moving into 2022? And then two, the second comment, what are your next pickups going to be when it comes to the precious metals? And if anybody's interested in joining the precious metals VIP club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout-outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And, of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial-free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. If you guys liked today's video, please... Hit that like button like Tyron Woodley hit the canvas on Saturday night. I'm just happy for the oh! Oh! Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Brand new videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have a ton of different designs. We have t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and coffee mugs. But until Christmas, you only have until Saturday, we got the DYDSS Christmas line. It's helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. It's for a good cause. It's helping children with cancer. 
Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And also make sure to go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. For every three friends you refer before the end of the month, you're going to get a spin on the Weeble wheel where you're guaranteed a free share of Apple and you have the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 free shares of Apple, each worth about $170 right now. And like I said, that's for every three friends you get a spin. If you refer six, you get two spins. If you refer nine, you get three, so on and so forth. And of course, until Thursday, this promo ends on the 23rd. For every friend you refer, they're going to give you six free random bonus stocks for every friend that you tell about Weeble. Time's running out. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? Of course, when it comes to supply chain constraints, when it comes to supply chain issues, when it comes to food being transported or, or supplies or equipment or tools or whatever the case may be, items, goods being transported and with there being supply chain bottlenecks right now, are you expecting things to get worse moving into early 2022. I'm talking about the first quarter of 22. I'm not talking about a year from now, five years from now. I'm talking about over the next 90 days. Are you expecting supply chain issues to worsen? And of course, if you can leave a secondary comment, letting me know your thoughts on the silver and gold right now. How do you feel about the spot price being in the green today? In fact, let me know what the current spot price is for you as you're watching the video, because who knows? For all I know, the spot price could be back in the red by the time this video comes out. So let me know your thoughts on the precious metals, and let me know what your next couple of pickups are likely going to be. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.